So that means for, in, in layman's terms, this is a $2 trillion asset class as of today. All the other asset classes, equities, bonds, real estate, gold, you know, all of these things are bigger. Gold is about 8 or 10 trillion. But equities, global equities, global bonds, global real estate, they're all between 150 and 350 trillion dollars. So if this is truly the asset class we think it is, and its adopt, its adoption is growing as fast as this, the maths, just the simple adoption maths, suggest that it gets to 200 trillion by the end of the decade. That's 100x. So if you think you're in the Middle East, if you think the wealth that happened in the Middle East from after the kind of Brits moved out and the um, and the ruling families took over and discovered oil, that amount of wealth came fast, but it actually took a while. So there was like 20 or 30 years from the 50s to the 70s. And then that amount of wealth was huge. Same with Russia, what happened in Russia once they opened up. What we're doing here is going to create something much larger, totally global in scale, that allows people to make enormous amounts of money as we completely change the world's financial system and the world's business models. The crypto market sentiment went into extreme fear again after Bitcoin and Ethereum lost price support over the past few hours. On-chain data shows an increasing selling pressure, which could lead to more significant losses. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Real Vision CEO and macro investor Raul Paul updates about the technological adoption of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin versus gold comparisons, and regulation aspect of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptos. Raul Paul also gives his perspective on recent volatility in the Bitcoin space and how it will improve over time. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Raul Paul predicts why he believes the entire crypto space will go to $200 trillion by the end of this decade. So, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. We've had some big changes of these gigantic networks in our lives that are, are very new. It's driven by computational power. So first, computational power and silicon chips, they all kind of take off slowly and then they start going crazy, like the adoption of home computers. But that took like 20 years. Then mobile phones came along and that took, I don't know, 15, 20 years before it really got adopted in massive scale because it was expensive, everything else. Then the internet comes along. This is the fastest adoption of any technology the world has ever seen. So we go back to 1997. There was 150 million users of the internet. And that network of people was growing at 63% a year. The world had never seen anything adopted this fast. Wind forward to today, there's 150 million users of cryptocurrencies. That network is growing at 113% a year. It's twice the speed of the internet. We have never had a technological adoption like this in all human history. So what does yes. this mean? I'm going to break. What does this mean for people, right? Yeah. What it means is networks are valued in a different way to other things. They're valued by what's known as Metcalfe's law. Metcalfe's law states the value of a network is basically the number of people on the network, users, in this case, cryptocurrency owners, and then the number of interconnections, applications, and other stuff. So if you think about, you know, my phone, right? When we first got a mobile phone, I could call you. Now it's a computer, right? The number of applications and everything else. So the value of all those mobile phone networks added together, plus Apple and everything else is like mind-blowingly big. So the value of crypto is really interesting because this is a network of money. We've seen these network models before, like Facebook. So Facebook is a big network. It's valued according to Metcalfe's law. But the difference with Facebook is we as users only get the benefit of the likes and the comments and connecting with our friends and family or, or using it for business. And Facebook shareholders made all the money. When you create a network of money, the more people come onto the network, everybody who comes onto the network owns a token. And the value of the token goes up the more people go into the network. 
So it's like ultra powerful. It's like behavioral economics 101 is give humans a network of money. They're going to make it go up in value and they're going to adopt it very fast. It's been a horror few weeks for cryptocurrency enthusiasts, but the worst is yet to come, according to market analysts. One blockchain expert has warned that the world's top-ranked cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, is set to drop down to just $8,000 in value. As dire as that price is, that's actually 1.5% improvement from the day before, indicating just how much strife the crypto market is in. Cryptocurrency has been stuck in a rut for most of 2022, but it plunged to new lows for the year last week, after a stablecoin plummeted by 98% in the space of just 24 hours, something which should have been impossible. The cryptocurrency community was left reeling when Terra, UST, previously among the top 10 most valuable cryptocurrencies in the world, slumped below $1 earlier this month. The impact has been instant. Skittish investors have pulled out and it's left the entire cryptocurrency space in distress, with Bitcoin and Ethereum briefly reaching levels that hadn't been seen since June last year. Now Guggenheim Investments Chief Investment Officer Scott Minard warned yesterday Bitcoin could continue its descent to the bottom and could fall as low as $8,000. Were that to happen, it would mean the blockchain would shed around 70% of its current value. So in a world of fiat currency, inflation can happen or debasement of currency or other things and and gold became the kind of global currency and the whole system was pegged on gold for um, hundreds of years and gold has been used for several thousand years as a system of money so mm. i could pay you gold and buy a car from you it's not that complicated to do but it's doable but it's a pretty clunky bitcoin comes along and it basically does this but via technology so you now can't increase the amount of mining because you've suddenly found a new mine in Papua New Guinea. There's like, it's a fixed number produced by mathematics that is impossible to change. So you know exactly the supply and you know exactly the, the stock. So now you've created something with scarcity. And because it's digital, it can never be destroyed because it's on the blockchain. The blockchain is basically a system of record. Normally, if we record something, if I sell you something, there's a ledger that says, I bought, you sold. But blockchain goes, I bought, you sold, and all of these people will confirm it. So that cannot be changed. So we don't go to court over it. It's just proven on the blockchain. So that solves gold in a way that was more useful for the current age, because we've now got the internet. You know, we've all bought and sold gold and it's a pain and you don't physically own it. And if you do, where do you store it in your house? And it's clunky and it's big and it's not easy to make a payment for a coffee or a car. I mean, I, I can do it, but it's not easy because we have to agree on the price of gold, all of this stuff. The Internet connects everybody around the world. Everybody's got a mobile phone. We need money and a store of value that operates in that system. Global. And along comes Bitcoin and solves that. And this is the opportunity that we've been given to us. This is the opportunity that we all have to tell other people about because I don't want anybody to come back to me this time around and say, why didn't we know? This is the opportunity. And what's really unique about it, you can be a construction worker from India living in Dubai and put in a few dirham a month. Or you can be a rich dude and put in whatever but you can both put in 5% of your earnings every month. And it, it's, it, doesn't, it stops the rich-poor divide because this stuff gets fractionalized. So Bitcoin, oh my God, it's $66,000. No, you can buy a small fraction. So everybody can buy the right percentage for them. As investors await the Fed minutes, the crypto market is seeing relatively muted trade. Although analysts do not foresee any overly optimistic outcome from the release given the language that has been adopted recently by the Fed, as the FOMC makes key decisions about interest rates and growth of the United States money supply, these meeting minutes will be pivotal for Bitcoin's price in the short term. If the Fed hints dovishness for the first time in a long while by mentioning no 75 basis point hikes or a pause in tightening on return to neutral rates, this would be bullish and could lead to a rally in the next one to two weeks for Bitcoin. And to get people across the line on this, just to interrupt a is you and I are talking right now I have no idea what computer you're on, what phone network you're on, what uh, your internet speed is, what software you're running, anything. And you don't know any of mine. And we don't care. 
We don't need to know this stuff. Yes, you can become an expert. First, you need to know what is the tailwind here? What is driving this asset, this asset class higher? And once you think about that, you can think about, okay, I don't need to be the expert. I, it's all new. That's okay. I'm going to learn on the journey. So firstly, just choose one of the big reputable exchanges, particularly one that's regulated somewhere, um, because that's going to give you a further comfort. So, you know, there's stuff like Coinbase or Kraken. There's a bunch of these that are big, globalized opportunities. Binance is somewhat different because it's it's kind of regulated in some countries, not in others, everything else. So you choose the risk level you want. Binance is amazing because of all the products you can trade. But just simply you choose one of the really big exchanges. Um, and then from that, once you've decided that, then you can start thinking about it. How I did it very simply, and I suggest everybody does it, is don't go diving off the end of some token that somebody randomly t told you about in a bar. Go about it intelligently and say, okay, the two big exposures here are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let me just weight my portfolio by their market cap weighting. So Bitcoin's just over a trillion dollars and Ethereum's $450 million. So there's a weighting for you. This kind of market cap weighting, like you would be if you bought the S&P 500. So that's a pretty easy place to start. Then put it in your portfolio and get to understand the volatility, what it feels like to own this. Because you haven't had an asset class like this before that's so volatile. So you're going to have to learn to fight your own psyche, which is panicking when it goes down, getting euphoric when it goes up. You have to realize it's a long-term investment because we're talking about something that's going from 2 trillion to 200 trillion over 10 years that you need to not think about, much like stuff in your retirement account you don't think about, and let it grow. Now, what's going to happen is magic, and it's happened to all of us, is once we do that, we start reading the news about it. Why did it go down? Why is it going up? What's going on here? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, but what does this new token do? Oh, that's interesting, because that's a bit different to this one. And before you know it, you learn by osmosis. It becomes easy. So do you agree with Raul's $200 trillion prediction for the crypto space by the end of this decade? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.